Hi, I'm Bart Paulson, and this video is a walkthrough for an exercise from Learn Python the Hard Way by Zed Shaw. You can get to it by going first to his website, learnpythonthehardway.org, and then clicking on Read the Free HTML Online. If you click on that, it'll take you to the table of contents right here. You can also click on this to get to the table of contents. And we're going to be doing this one right here, Exercise for Variables and Names. If you click on that, it'll take you to this page right here. Now, what you're going to see here is a way of working with variables. Um, like anything, a variable is the opposite of a constant. A constant is always the same value, like pi is a constant, e is a constant. Um, anyhow, these things are always the same. A variable can take different values. And the nice thing in, in uh, computer programming is you can use a variable to put a name on a number when that number can take different values. And it makes it a little easier to write code that you can understand, and it makes it easier to modify it. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to enter this text right here. That's the text. And we're going to put it into a Text Wrangler and save it as a script. I've got Text Wrangler open already. I'm going to make this a little, a little bit bigger right here. And let me run through it one line at a time and explain what's going to happen. Now, again, I've already typed it and I've deleted it one line at a time, so I just hit undo and it comes back. The first thing is we're going to create a variable called cars. Now, the thing you need to know when you name a variable is there are certain restrictions. You can't have spaces in the name of the variable. It needs to be one word. If you need a space or if you need to have two words like new cars, you can put an underscore character in the middle of it. You'll see that in just a moment. Also, I believe it cannot begin with a, a period or an underscore or a number. Um, you wouldn't want to do that anyhow. <clears throat> so we have a variable called cars. Also note, the variable names are case sensitive. If I spelled it with a capital C, it would be a different variable than with a lowercase c. And that can be a source of confusion. It's usually a good idea to use all lowercase for your variable names. Now the equal sign here actually has a, an interesting role in it. Here it's called an assignment operator. And what that means is, create a variable called cars, and then put into it the value 100. So 100 goes into cars. Sometimes it's right as cars gets 100. And this is different from the, the typical use of the equal sign. Normally you want to say like 2 plus 2 equals 4. When we get to something like that later, you'll actually be using two equal signs as a way of specifying equality as a logical operator. We'll get to that later. Right now, the equal sign is just what's called the assignment operator, and it's a way of putting a value into a variable. So we've now created a variable called cars, and we've assigned a value of 100 to that variable. Uh, next, we're going to create a variable called space in a car. Now, because I want to emphasize that these are different words, or as Ed does, he still has the whole variable name as a single word, but he's using underscores to separate the words, but keep it as a single piece of text. And he's putting the value of 4.0 in it. Then we're going to have another variable called drivers with a value of 30. Another variable called passengers with a value of 90. And now we're going to, this is interesting, we're creating a variable called cars not driven. But instead of assigning it a value directly, we're going to use a little bit of math. We're going to use previously defined variables. So we're going to take the number of cars, which is 100, and subtract the number of drivers, because there's one driver per car. So it's going to be 100 minus 30, which means this is going to have a value of 70. Um, and this could be a really nice thing, because you, as you create variables, you can refer to anything you created above it and use that uh, in sort of an algebra. Next one is cars driven equals drivers. Now, you know, this is an interesting one, because it's creating a variable with the same value as another one. Sometimes you do this because you want to have what's called an initial value and that you might change the, the value associated with the car is driven later, but this get, makes it so they start in the same place. After that, we have this one. Carpool capacity is equal to cars driven times space in a car. Now, um, we have cars driven, which we defined right here as a function of the number of drivers, and space in a car, we use an asterisk to indicate multiplication. And then space in the car is this variable right here with a 4.0. So it's assuming you can put four people in the car. 
And then we have average passengers per car equals number of passengers, which is a variable we defined right here, divided by, use the slash for division, cars driven, which we got right here. Okay. Now, by the way, you'll want to note that one of these space in a car is defined as with a point O. The other ones are not. That means that the other variables like cars and drivers and passengers are all integer variables. They only, and when you do math with them, it gives you whole number values. But space in a car is a floating point value. The point zero means that it can give fractional or decimal values when you do math with it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start printing stuff out. Print there are, print the words there are, and then the comma, and then cars. So put the value associated with the variable cars. That's going to be 100. And then add cars available. Uh, by the way, you don't have to manually insert spaces. It knows to do that. That's kind of convenient. And then there are only so many drivers available, and there will be this many empty cars today. We can transport, and then carpool capacity, and we have this many passengers to carpool, and we need to put about this average number in each car, and that's it. So I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to come over here. Sorry, I closed it, but that's fine. I'm done with it anyhow. And, um, and now I'm in the terminal and I'm going to run it. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm currently in the folder that has my scripts in it. Scripts is another name for uh, programs here. This is the one I'm going to use. See, if I open it, quick look, there's all the uh, content right there. I'm going to type Python, then ex04.py. Again, by writing Python all in lowercase, it tells take this thing and run it as a Python file. Then I give it the name of the file, including the extension. When I run that, you see that it inserts the stuff. There are only 100 cars. There's only 30 today. We can transport 120.0. Let me open this one back up. And you can see why it's putting a point zero on that one. We can transport, because carpool capacity is this one right here. It's cars driven plus space in a car. And space in a car is a floating point number. And so that's going to sort of propagate. Because we define it as a floating point, that means that, and therefore it has a decimal, this one, carpool capacity, will be floating point and have a decimal. And therefore this one, um, excuse me, this one will then use that floating point value. We have to put about 90. We need to put about three in each car. Now, um, Anyhow, that's the basics of doing this, of using variables. And the idea here, again, you can specify the name of a variable. You can refer to it earlier, and if you, it gives you the opportunity to change it or to update it as you go through the program. Anyhow, that's exercise four. Hope that helps.